Good evening, everybody. How are you getting on tonight? It's your boy DC, and this is Out of the Fog. We're a local matter show that goes right across the province and beyond. And we're having all the best and brightest come through, and everyday folks, too, talking about all the things they're doing to help our province be a better place to be. Speaking of which, we got Christian Davis from Davis Film Incorporated coming through to talk about his projects, new and old horror, and all the stuff that you want to see. And then we have Sam Hall from Yak talking about being a shave ambassador for 2022. We can't wait to talk more to him. And Ryan Osborne. He is going to be talking all about what it means to be a fit leader. He kicks my butt every day, and you're going to learn all about a wicked program he's got going on to help more people get into the fitness groove. This is Out of the Fog, and we'll be right back after this break. You're watching Rogers TV St. John's. We're here at The Rooms, finishing our second season of Sharing Our Cultures. This is the place where you get to meet amazing individuals from diverse cultural backgrounds who are making significant contributions to our communities. Join us for Sharing Our Cultures on Rogers TV, Channel 9. Rogers TV St. John's. Welcome back, everybody. This is Out of the Fog, and we got a wicked lineup like I done told you before the break. But you know what I love the most, and that's having storytellers come on the show because they're all amongst us in a million ways. And to my left, the one and only Christian Davis. What are you at? This is it, man. Thank you for having me. Well, I know you're on TV shows all the time, hanging out every other day. So this is old hat to you, Usually is it? Usually it's on the other side. Yeah, yeah so this exactly. is a fun little change. Yeah, I like no, to switch yeah, it up on time. you. Just me oh. thought it was safe. <laughs> and it's true, just to bring um, people more into the moment, is that you are the man on the other side. Indeed. There is a collective of incredible storyteller, filmmaker, documentarians, producers in our midst, and you are leading the pack with the exciting projects that you Appreciate decide to take that. on. Thank you, man. Oh my gosh. Um, I know you love getting compliments, too. You don't get uncomfortable <laughs> about that at all, I'm sure. All. I don't get yeah. enough. Yeah, no, no one does. <laughs> and that's why I wanted to have you come on. That's so many nice. of us are doing hard work producing, creating, yep. and no one's around to give you that pat on the back and be like, yo, you're kicking ass, keep it up. Word. You know? Yep. What got you into the art of filmmaking? The art of filmmaking, yeah. yep. Well, we can take this back all the way <laughs> to the first movie I even remember, which is, of course, Star Wars. <sighs> um, yeah, honestly, as soon as Luke is handed that lightsaber, blast on my jaw was on the floor at three years old um, and so I always really wanted to do something visually um, I was actually into like drawing and all that stuff Me back too. in the day um, and then around junior high high school ish I got into mountain biking hmm. um, rode all the trails down in uh, White Hills Kitty Vitty area that Chris Jared and Co at Free Ride Mountain Sports um, did yeah. uh, all the uptake on yeah. all the maintaining those um, races um, the Avalon Cup and stuff like that back in the day. So that's actually how I got into filmmaking. Uh, through mountain biking, through just like filming my friends and stuff back in high school. No way. Um, yeah, so that's how I, why I picked up a camera in the first place. As soon as I graduated, basically, I knew I didn't want to do anything like business or really like engineering or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I decided to check out the <laughs> Kona Film and Video Production Program in Stephenville. Love it. Oh, did you go there? I did. Beauty. Uh, yeah. As soon as I graduated, actually, um, I locked down a company at local production house, Best Boy Entertainment. In oh, Florida. yeah. Um, I can only imagine the learnings and the experience and the lessons learned. Big time. Yep. So, I mean, just right off the bat, it was just like coming out of film school right into like, say, another, like that's the PhD of film school or whatever. Yeah. You, yeah, um, really, like that whole experience um, working on in the post-production side of things on some network uh, TV shows for Discovery Canada and stuff like that. Wow. Um, and back in, right before the pandemic hit, actually. Oh, God, take me back there, why don't <laughs> you? Thanks. Too. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> um, I applied to a program, a local program here, put off by NIFCO, the Newfoundland mm. and Labrador Independent Filmmakers Co-op. Indeed. Called Picture Start. Yes. And so basically, I applied as a producer and got paired up with the lovely Grind Mind Horror folks. Um, and that 
uh, happened right before the big shutdown, so that obviously affected us. But um, through that whole process, I was able to really incorporate my, my company, Davis Film Inc. As we're in this uh, COVID haze, COVID uh, shutdown, trying to stay productive. Of course. And I figured, why not apply to Picture Start again with my good friend, Mike Hickey, um, and his short, That Halloween. So yes. we were fortunate enough to be selected for that project as well. Um, and then, because of the whole shutdown, Mummering Legends was bottlenecked. Um, so Mummering Legends is the first one. Okay. So you're in the middle of that COVID moment, the haze, yep. and what comes out but two different horror films and a bunch of other projects. But isn't that the life of a filmmaker like you are? Just the way it works. Uh, fortunately enough, yeah. Um, so we got um, Mummering Legends, which is the Grindmind horror collaboration, and Can't That wait. Halloween. The uh, collaboration with filmmaker Michael Hickey. Yeah, and there's some the other like names are up in these projects. Anyone there's, come to mind? Um, I don't know. Have you heard of Mary Walsh? No, don't She's know her. Amazing. No, bye. Um, she was her. our <laughs> uh, fantastic to work with. Our I can't imagine of the Mummering Legends. That yeah. must have been like a highlight moment. It was fantastic. Yeah. Um, so she's really a, a big part of that movie. That's so exciting. Um, and the cast of that Halloween is extremely diverse. Yeah. Mike did a fantastic job with that. He's great. Um, he is. He loves the genre. He lives he, the genre. I said like that Halloween is Mike Hickey, um, and so <laughs> <laughs> both of those films are on the Short Film Circuit Festival now. Okay. Fantastic. Love to hear it. Um, that Halloween is actually um, award winning now. We just mm. won um, Best Editing at the Haunted House Surface. Now you and know and you love that. That was Best Kind, yeah. Because um, be you led that, you know? Uh, I made it happen, yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, um, and you know, Mike Hickey was also the talent of course, behind that. Of course, of um, course. And Grindmind, um, their Mummery Legends film is also doing great. We had a really great review in the December 2021 20, issue of Room Org magazine. Love it. So, um, yeah, they are fantastic. Couldn't be happier with uh, how those films turned out. That's so good. There's so many more to come. I want to ask you, we're in the final minute of Hang cool. here. Yep. What are you working on right now? Excellent. I know you're just working on a Wicked series for a good while about full circle moments. Know, right? So talk Funny. about it. So, yep, yeah, um, back uh, earlier 2021, I was approached, um, not really approached, I had a project kind of fall into my lap um, <laughs> that was, just so happened to be a mountain biking series. Uh, that That's like so full circle, man. So bizarre. Um, but yeah, fortunately enough, I got to direct an upcoming uh, series called Ride the Rock, which is going to be on the uh, Bell TV One 5 Love world. It. Um, we started uh, in White Hills and then went all across the province. So. so yeah, very proud of that one. Um, couldn't be happier with it again. So that's going to be coming out um, within the next month for sure. Um, um, have you ever renovated a house before? I have not. I've heard it's quite the ordeal, quite the fun time. Well, will you come back again to talk about it with us another time? I think so. Guys, there's going to be something I'm going to bore you with another time. It's a project I'm working on with Christian. It's about renovating, and we're going to like talk about it later. But for it's now, Davis Film Incorporated, so many projects. Check them out online. More to come. Of course. I'll Will you come back and talk about it? You know, it's any time. I'd love it. All right. Cool. Bye, Christian. Check him out. This is Out of the Fog, and we'll be right back after this break. It all started when I racked up some serious debt. Interest payments were going up. Creditors were calling. Jane's and Noseworthy came up with a plan. Knowing that the phone was going to stop ringing and that I was not in this alone was a huge relief. Bankruptcy or a consumer proposal or whatever help you get is not the end. It's just the beginning. A chance to start again with knowledge and support and people in your corner. Are you ready? Get out of debt. It's okay. Learn more about Leah's story at janesnoseworthy.ca. Are you a woman experiencing abuse? Do you know a woman experiencing abuse? Help is available any time of day or night. Sheltersafe.ca is an online map that helps you find a women's shelter or transition house that meets your needs so you can live a life free from violence. Sheltersafe.ca. Help is just a click away. Welcome back, everybody. This is Out of the Fog. Am I ever excited to have this all-star hanging out left to me? Sam, how you doing? Good, how are you? Doing great, buddy. That hair's getting pretty long, isn't yeah. it? Do you like to wear it that long? Usually you're growing out for a special occasion. I know yeah. the answer. I'm <laughs> um, growing out for Shave for the Brave. Yeah, buddy. Now, have you shaved once? Have you shaved twice? Six times. Oh, jeez. I mean, excuse everyone. Six times? And this will be the seventh time. Yeah. Lucky number seven. Mm -hmm. Pretty wicked. What school do you go to? 
I go to St. Paul's. Okay, East End. Yeah. Nice. I grew up in Logie Bay, which was a dirt road back in the day, but now it's right down the street from St. Paul's these days. What brought you into the idea that you would shave your head to help young adults living with, through, and beyond cancer? Tell me everything. So um, I started doing it for my nan, who had breast cancer twice. So that was when I first started shaving, and then I kept on doing it each year because I love doing it. <laughs> and then last year, my dad passed from cancer, mm. so it started to mean a bit more to me as well. I'd say. So then I raised a good bit of money last year. I raised over $12,000. Wow, Sam. Mm -hmm. That's wild. When you start to grow your hair out and you know that you're going to fundraise to help people living with room beyond cancer, did you ever imagine that you would have that much support behind you, man? No. I never thought I'd have this much. It's wild. What are the gifts of having so many people turn up and turn out and support you so much? It just feels good. Yeah? Just the gratitude. Totally. And it's funny, right, because a lot of us, um, we think about doing things that'll make us feel vulnerable and we don't know how things are going to go and mm -hmm. taking chances is what it's all about. Yeah. But the reward. It feels yeah. great. I know, I bet. And I see so many of your friends, obviously, whether they're shaving their head or donating to you, they must learn a little bit about um, cancer and, and relationships and the journey too, am I right? Yeah. Right? And so I have to ask you, you know, what's the longest that you've grown your hair out before you've shaved? How long does it get? Definitely this year. This yeah? year's definitely been the longest by a good, <laughs> good margin. Yeah. Longest it's been before was probably like to like here, just okay. above my eyes. Yeah, now it's starting to curl up on you. Yeah, now it goes down to like my nose. That's it's definitely weird. the longest. I've shaved my head twice, and the third time I oh. gave myself, uh, I shaved a mohawk. Oh. I don't recommend it, it was not a good look. <laughs> No, but I thought it was for a minute, and I was like, no, this is wrong, and then I got rid of the rest of it. But yeah, I mean, the experience of shaving your head, there's a lot of anticipation that leads up to the moment. How have you shaved it? Have you done it at home, out at events? Have your friends been around? Like, what's that about? Well, I did um, at school, at my old school, MQP, up until grade six. Yeah. Actually, no, grade six I did it at home because of COVID. Oh, right. So I did at bubble. home. Um, that year they didn't have as much people do it, but like sure. they still had a good bit do it. Yeah. And raised a good bit of money. Yeah. And yeah, it was nice to do it at home. And then the year after I did it at home again, and that was really nice. I, I like doing it at home. Yeah, really? Honestly. Yeah. But I mean, do they capture it in video or anything, or you yeah. just get her done? Um, I think the past two years, we did it on like Zoom with a bunch of my friends. Yeah, so fun. Yeah, it was awesome. That's hilarious. Zoom, you know, say what you want. It can bring us together in yes, a different way, you know? Mm -hmm. And so talk about this year. Like, where's it all going down? When are you doing it? Like, what's the story? Um, so I'm thinking of doing it ap after April. Okay. And I think I might do it at home. I'm not too sure yet. Yeah? I mean, you know, I don't know if you're involved in any sort of like outdoorsy, sporty type entities. Like, what do your friends do for fun? Like, what do you ask? Uh, me and my friends, we like to play hockey, mm -hmm. basketball, mm -hmm. uh, biking. Biking's a really big one. Yeah? And in the summer, man tracker. What's that? Um, so it's kind of like hide and seek, kind of like hide and seek tag. Yeah. Uh, you have a couple of people like it. Yeah. Then you go like hide around like, the neighborhood and stuff, yeah. and they count to like a certain number. Right. And then they go and try and catch everyone. Last one standing wins. I mean, that's an evolved name for the game. That's a classic childhood bop. I love it. Yeah. And it's funny, you know, and I got to tell you what, it's refreshing in this moment to hear that the games you're playing now are still the same ones that we played mm -hmm. because sometimes we have an impression that young adults and teenagers are just plugged into the game system in the basement flat out. Is it not that way so much? No, not as much. That's good. I'm glad to hear. Yeah. When you first decided to shave and the reasons that you've told us that you've continued to shave, which are so amazing, um, do you think there's a lot of people around you that have learned more about cancer and the impacts of it and how they can help? Um, I would say so. Yeah? Probably learned that it's like a bigger thing than like people think. It is a bigger thing than people think. Mm -hmm. It's true. What do you think of Jeff? Uh, Jeff Eaton from Yak. Of oh, course, he's really boy. nice. He's, he's awesome. The man, mm -hmm. right? He lives it, he loves it. Yeah. And the whole Yak team are so supportive. Do you agree? Yeah, they're really supportive. Mm -hmm. Awesome people. Now, leaderboard. We don't go into the shave for the glory. We do uh, it for... the for, competition. Well, there's a little bit of competition. A little bit of competition. You, a little bit, you know, I'm not trying to like, right? So how does that feel to, you know, to earn that dough, to help so many people, and to have a little bit of recognition along oh, the that way? Was, that was nice. Yeah? Felt nice. When I first checked the leaderboard, seeing I was second, I didn't expect that. I was, just, I was just shocked. It's crazy, hey? Yeah. So fun. Now, you have a great family around you. Mm -hmm. They support you. Do you ever get the urge to cut it off and they're like, no, no, Sam. 
No, never. No? Because <laughs> I'd be like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. Because there gets those points when you're growing out your hair. There are the points where it is just a jungle. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So when you're thinking about the future, would you do it eight times? Probably, yeah. Wow. You're committed. Mm -hmm. What's your advice to everybody out there hanging out who is thinking about participating in this? They don't have the courage or they don't really know. What, what would you have to say? To I them? say once you get done with, it just feels great. It's just like like nice, cool breeze. No one like you don't have to like style it in the morning or anything. It's just like already done. <laughs> just in time for the summer too. It's perfect. It is. And the nice breeze in the summer. Oh it's yeah, perfect. it's great. It's great. Now listen, you know, Young Adult Cancer Canada, a national organization that started right here in the province, helping folks get with through and beyond cancer as a young adult, which is so important for us because it's the most mm -hmm. exciting time of our lives, some would say, yeah. you know? And so there's a lot of great people like you who are helping to make it happen. But there are some people at home hanging out who would like to feel a little bit more support in their decision to do so. What would you say to someone who's watching this tonight, thinking about getting involved, but they don't know if they should or if they could? What would you say? I'd say, do what you feel like doing. I'd say, mm -hmm. most likely, I'd want you to go for it, but it's your decision. Totally right. Yeah. Um, and I'll tell you what, I bet there's a lot of people um, who are proud of all the good work you've done, mm -hmm. all the money that you've raised. So, I mean, what's your advice to someone who's growing their hair out right now, and they're in that in-between stage? What do you tell them? I'd say, go for it. Yeah? It's awesome. So, Just the feeling. I know, and you know what? As someone who's done it, like I say, a couple of times myself, um, and this year's campaign is so awesome. I want to ask you, what's it like to have Yak reach out and make you an ambassador for the 2022 campaign? It feels really good. It yeah. made me feel like really grateful, knowing that there's people out there like want me to like help them out. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, between you and Nikki and Mark and the, all the other ambassadors that we've had and more to come, there's a lot of people proud of you. I appreciate you coming on the show so much. And keep doing the good work, will you? Thank you. I will. I love it. We come back again sometime. Sure. Deadly. You can have your little sibling come up and hang out too. You never know. Next yeah. time. Next time. Guys, this is out of the fog, and we'll be right back after this break. Welcome back, everybody. It is Out of the Fog, and I'm here lucky enough to hang out with one of the fitness mecca gurus helping to keep all of us tight and in shape. It's the one and only Ryan oh, Osborne. Stop. How are you, buddy? What's up, What's up DC, how, buddy? How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm grand, man. I appreciate it. That's a bit over the top for me, but hey, listen, have all we, game. Have we met? Like, hello. Have we? Uh, no, we're not, I we're think, not under I think the so. top, are we? I think no. so. Well, I'll tell you what. In the business world, yeah. it's moving, shaking, money making, but behind all of that is <clears> providing value, forming relationships and trust yep. Yep. and making impact. Yep. Am I right? I, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I'm, you know, eight years in now in terms of my business, like anything kind of, um, it was, you know, putting things out there, building a reputation. Uh, you know, yes, being, a, you know, a kinesiologist, um, you know, graduated in 05, but worked for various companies, mm -hmm. uh, of course. And then I uh, did some personal training on the side and then I was, I would say, you know, one of the first to kind of go into the online digital realm a number of years ago. And, you know, a lot of people have talked to me, you know, in terms of business owners and whatnot and said, like, what, you know, what happened to the pandemic? What did you have to do? I, I mean, I didn't have to do anything, mm. you know, honestly. Um, so for me, you know, business was going very well. The pandemic struck and uh, an unfortunate situation, but certainly sure. a blessing just because everyone wanted to go with the online uh, route. Uh, and for me, um, I'm a soul guy, so it's one-to-one. -one. It's mm -hmm. just my bread and butter to it, uh, and uh, it's been awesome. Yeah? Well, I'll tell you, it, it feels awesome to have someone in your corner who is supporting you, um, holding you accountable, yep. kicking your ass a little bit. Yeah. A lot of Needs bit. to. Needs of to. Of course. Got to. Cuts you. I mean, to. yeah, I think, you know, the, the big thing with that, Donnie, is, you know, accountability, um, especially now, like, let's just look at really the present day, right? We're coming out of this finally with a, a little bit of sense of, okay, you know, hopefully we're, we're going to move on to the next transition, I'll call it, right? Sure. Um, but the reality is, is, you know, people are in a huge lull, right? And, and I know we'll talk about kind of like this, this, this little challenge that I got coming on there, which really kind of mm -hmm. stirred the, the imagination behind it. But even clients that are just reaching out, really dark places. Sometimes their spouses know, sometimes they do not, mm -hmm. right? And then also where I work 
kind of with the, you know, the visit professionals is that just the stresses of knowing that you've got to try to, you know, support your employees and what that brings. Um, and so everybody, like I always say, X's and O's with fitness and nutrition is one thing, but a coach truly should be about accountability. So would you call yourself a coach? Uh, I think many things. No, I'm not. I mean, at the end of the day, um, I'm just uh, a, a facilitator, wow. right? I'm a facilitator, right? I, I want to be of, of inspiration and change, mm. you know, and sometimes, you know, people want it the last time, the last bit when they had a hard day, mm. knowing that, you know, I'm going to be on their butt. But at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's there for the greater good, right? You wanting to be your best self, and there's obviously pieces of the puzzle for you to get there. Right. And obviously life will come in and wreck the crap out of things constantly. So we're in the corner, we're in, you know, obviously, um, you know, fist pumps and great. But at the end of the day, a coach is meant to help someone level up. So sometimes it's a little bit harsh and, you know, you're trying to push. But at the end of the day, we're, we're both on the same mission. Well, 100 percent. Right? And I will speak um, everyone viewing in to this interview from personal experience. Ryan's been my guy over two years. Uh, I, I would never be so bragging to say I'm in the shape of my life, but I am. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the support and the accountability and the digital technology yeah. Like, you know, to wake up and to know what my workout is, which is not the workout I had yesterday, and to know that I have to enter that in and that he is going to be on me yeah. about the gains and the lifts and the details yeah. and the nutrition. Yeah. And it's the text at 9.30 in the night to be like, nah, bro. <laughs> and I'm looking out, I'm like, you son of a... Good night, and I go to bed. And like, this is the game, but yeah, how it rewarding is. is it? And fitness over 40, I mean, you take care yeah. of people from various walks of yeah. life, professional and not, yeah. older, exactly. younger. Um, what is the response outside of me, you know, making you blush, but how proud are you that so many people are holding you in such high regard to helping them be their best? Yeah, there's, there's a little question, my man. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, again, I, like, I think like anything, I, I, I really do. Sometimes, you know, you get confined into the weeds. Like, I'm, I, I take pers people's losses and struggles very personally. I mm. really do, right? So when they're kind of battling, I'm like, okay, how can we, you know, navigate it, right? Um, and, and yes, I still got to separate my work and my life balance, of course. Of course. Of course. But at the end of the day, um, when I do see people really become um, back to their either old self, mm. pre-career, pre-kid, or whatnot, um, mm. Like, I, I, like I'm all about is taking leadership within your own self first. You can't be your best father, your best mother, your best, you know, entrepreneur, best CEO. If you can't honestly do your own self. So at the end of the day, when I lay my head, right, I just think, you know what? There was at least one person that I really thought kind of I put towards them in a, in a positive needle. That to me is what, what this is all about for me. Well, talk to me more about this thing you mentioned earlier on. You got this new thing going on. By the time that this show airs, you're already a bit down the country yeah. road. Tell me everything. Okay. So... I would say the past two years, you know, it's just been an absolute mental slog. True. Uh, and we know the connection of mental health with physical health. And mental health rates have gone through the roof over the past two years. And studies show also that we're not moving as much. So obesity is going up. So there's really a whole whack of things besides the economic push. And like I've been telling kind of people to this is that, you know, the world paused for two years, but your health didn't, hmm. right? So at the end of the day, you got to look at it and say, okay. So I used to do, you know, I still part of my business besides, you know, one-to-one -one coaching, um, is corporate wellness. Mm -hmm. And I work with a lot of HR people and CEOs and just getting their vibe in terms of what the vibe is like in their office. Yeah. And everyone, some people are hybrids, some are in office, some are at home, or some are exclusively home, so they don't get that connection. Right. What does success look like for you when April finishes and you're communicating with all the people who have signed up? What does success feel like for you? Honestly, at the end of the day, um, there's going to be some, you know, I've got a wicked award um, that I'm going to be giving away and some prizes to that. But Love I think, that. like, at the end of the day, the way the challenge is kind of shaped up is, yeah, you're going to have your teams, and, of course, they're going to have great morale and energy boosting and team-building bonds of, like, come on, let's go, let's go team versus other companies. But I think if anything, at the end of the 30 days, right, I want those um, people just be able to say, I'm either moving more, I'm just taking that little extra more conscious approach to my health, I may be sleeping a little bit better, or I'm managing my stress. And mm -hmm. these are the habits that we're going to focus on mm -hmm. over the course of the 30 days. But it's just about moving that needle in the right direction while having a freaking blast. Why are the easiest things to do and the most fundamental things to do the hardest things to do? Why? Why? It's because we love, we love, we just love comfort. We comfort do. in our own kind of self to know that, hey, everyone else is doing it. It's a blinded excuse, yeah. right? To know that 
ha, ah, this is, it feels okay. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you gotta look at yourself and say, am I providing the most energetic self? Am I protruding confidence? Not again to others, no, just no. looking at yourself Inside. in that mirror first thing. And you know, I, I, to me, like I look at wellness as a little bit more of a larger holistic approach Agreed. and that's just been great. And I think so because stress and, and, uh, and sleep do play a role as sure. of uh, exercise and nutrition. But I think at the end of the day, you gotta have some pride and you gotta have some, some confidence. Um, and if you just go through the motions, it's gonna be a, it's, it's gonna be a struggle. And mm. people are like, they're in their own way. And mm. I'm like, you just like time to plow through. You did it in the past, or if you haven't for so, so long, you, your family, your work, everybody deserves it. So let's just move. Well, I want to do that, and I want you <laughs> to help everyone do that. Ryan Osborne, mm -hmm. check him out online. You're going to yep. find it. And we're all fit leaders in a million ways, and he's Love helping it. to bring that to life. Will you come back again? Always. I Love Always. It. Love it. Right, Guys, man. this is Out of the Fog. He's your boy, and we'll be right back <laughs> after the break. Guys, I want to remind you that Sam Hull currently is shaving his head for Shave for the Brave. You can go to shaveforthebrave.ca and you can make a donation. You can also host a shave or you can do a whole bunch of things. Check it out and see everyone who's shaving now. And Ryan, thank you so much for all those fitness tips and everything you do to keep everybody motivated. Check him out if you guys want to level up the fitness and lifestyle game. And of course, Christian, he's a storyteller and I love those because that's what we're trying to do for each other to help us out every day. This is Out of the Fog. We want you to tune in next time. So come on back, boom. If you have a comment about